नमस्ते अंडी नमस्ते टुडे वी आर् टाकिंग अबउट दि गुरकुल प्रिपरेशन फर् डीएल फर् जिजी सबजेक्ट वेलकम टू आल दस्पिरेंट्स आफ दि डीएल गुरकुलाक्चरर्स आफ दि जिजी सबजेक्ट टुडे वी विल डिस्क अबउट अ फ्यू इंपारटेंट आस्पेक्ट्स बिफोर दट लेट मी इंट्रड्यूस दि सबजेक्ट अंदर सबजेक्ट एक्सपर्ट प्रोफेसर डी श्रीनिवास शर्मा चीफ सैंटिस फ्रम एन जी आर ए so to let us take up uh, geology is a very vast subject uh, there are many subjects in it especially mineralogy and petrology are very important subjects today we will deal about these two subjects mineralogy being the basic core of the subject if one is very uh, strong in mineralogy other subjects will be quite easy to face the examination any kind of examination so with uh, starting from mineralogy we'll talk about some minerals what kind of questions may be expected how to answer them how to remember all the uh, bits will i try to explain you very slowly start in mineralogy we'll start uh, start with uh, olivine olivine is the first mineral in the boyens reaction series in the discontinuous series uh, it 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 is princip it principally occurs in mafic and ultramafic rocks it there are forest the two main minerals are forestite and phyllite forestite being magnesium uh, rich and phyllite being iron rich and the only rock which contains the mono mineralic rock which contains olivine is dunite another rock which contains olivine is peridotite this kind of questions may be asked like uh, what is the rocks which contain olivine or which is the mono mineralic rock containing uh, olivine and another most important is the olivine weathers very easily because it is the first mineral in the boyens reaction series it weathers very easily it weathers to serpentine which is a very wide form of altered product of olivine so these are the some of the important uh, uh, points in olivine which we have to remember Mo maybe one or two questions may be asked from this then we'll move on to the pyroxenes pyroxenes the general formula is x1 minus p y1 plus p z2 o6 pyroxene crystallizes in three crystal systems orthorhombic monoclinic and triclinic anstatite to orthoferrocellite is orthorhombic monoclinic is diapside hedenbergite joensenite augite then we have pegeonite azurine jadeite spodumene in triclinic we have alstonite and rhodonite here we have to remember a few important things azurine is one of the minerals which contains fe3 plus spodumene is another mineral which contains lithium lithium pyroxene is spodumene fe3 plus pyroxene is azurine there are only two triclinic pyroxenes namely alstonite and rhodonite so this uh, some of the important uh, points in um, uh, uh, pyroxene then we we'll, if you go for the orthorhombic pyroxenes anstatite occurs in early differentiates of igneous intrusions then that is buchwald uh, still water and skier guard another is uh, uh, here opx means generally it is hypersthene hypersthene is the most characteristic ferromagnesian mineral in charnakite rocks typical of the granulite phases so uh, there there's there there's a likelihood of this question which is very frequently occurring which is the most important pyroxene mineral in the granulite phases so here it is only opx dot the cpx then we if we go to diapside diapside occurs in picrites basalts testites therlites then uh, the pyroxenes agate alters to chloride chloride the main important product of altership product of agate is chloride then if you go to omphacite omphacite is a very high grade uh, pyroxene mineral which occurs in eclogite series it is a very high pressure series which uh, uh, it is the most important mineral it is a diagnostic mineral of the eclogite phases high pressure phases then azurine which is fe3 plus mineral which occurs only in alkali granites uh, then the next one is actinolite is the amphibole uh, Uh, though this azurine uh, actinolite occurs in association with epidote and chloride which is typical of green schist phases then if you go for the basic ultra basic and basic rocks here we have plagioclase there are only two mono mineralic rocks plagio only rock which contains only plagioclase is anorthosite another rock which contains only olivine is dunite so we have to remember these two especially for these two the slide has been slide has been prepared then if you go for the garnets there are two series of garnets 
high temperature garnets are in low temperature garnets, high temperature garnets are pyropalmondine spessartine, low temperature garnets are grosserolite, uravite and andradite. Then if you go for pyro, it is a very important rock in ultra basic rocks, especially mica peridotites and kimberlites. It also occurs in eclogites, which have garnet as an essential constituent. Wherever the garnet is there in eclogites, it is basically pyro. Then almondine, it occurs in garnetiferous seas, it is a zonal mineral, it indicates a certain set of temperature and pressure. So, it when you go here, it, the series is chlorite, brown biotite, almondine. So, almondine is a higher grade than biotite, lesser grade than starlight. You have, we have to remember this series in pelitic rocks. In granulate phases, almondine uh, occurs or uh, it occurs as almondine or almondine pyro. It is a product of thermal metamorphosis of pelitic rocks. So, in pelitic rocks, almondine is very important. Then if you, uh, if you go for uh, pyro, pyro is a very important indicator of the kimberlite rocks also. Then if you come for the epidote group of minerals, there are joycite, epidote, uh, pimontite and almonite, alanite. In it occurs, a, it is a characteristic association, the epidote occurs with albite, actinolite and chloride. It is a very important in Greenseas phases of metamorphism. The association is very important, epidote, albite, actinolite and chloride. Then there is a, if, wherever there is a calcium metasomatism, Epidotization is a main important feature, which is a low temperature feature. Then, if, then if you go for plagioglase feldspars, the series is albite, oleoglase, and seen labradorite and anorthite. Albite is sodium rich, anorthite is calcium rich. Then, uh, here the important uh, in plagioglase feldspars is we have to remember the textures. What is perthite and what is antiperthite? Then, if potassium is greater than sodium, it is perthite. When sodium is potash, greater than potassium, it is antiperthite. In graphic granite, intergrowth of alkali feldspars with quartz is called graphic granite. The feldspar is usually a microclean or a microperthite. In mirbakite, mirbakite is very important texture. Wherever there is a vermicular quartz in association with plagioglase, it is called mirbakite. These textures are very, very important in plagioglase feldspars. Then Rapakavi granites, very large crystals of potassium feldspars, which are mantled by plagioglase, either albite or oleoglase, these are called, these are called Rapa, Rapakavi granites. Then if you, uh, then there is albertization, which is very, very important in spillites. Spillites have a very characteristic phenomenon known as albertization. Then plagioglase feldspars are the main constituents of dolerites and many other hypobasal rocks. Characteristic, there is a uh, there is a boundary between amphibolite phases to granulate phases. Whenever a mineral passes from amphibolite phases to granulate phases, then there is occurrence of plagioglase feldspars. Then the next one is mica. Mi there are two types of mica, basically trioctahedral micas and dioctahedral micas. Trioctahedral micas are those which contain x in y as 4 and y if y is 6, it, they are called di trioctahedral micas. If y is 4, they are called dioctahedral micas. Then how to differentiate these two under a microscope are trioctahedral micas are strongly pleochroic, dioctahedral micas, uh, micas do not show any pleochroism. Then there is fuxa, there is a muscovite which contains chromium 6 percent. Such uh, muscovites are called as fuxites. Fuxites are those muscovites which contain more than 6 percent chromium. Then the, the alteration of feldspars gives rise to sericite. Sericite is a very fine grained white mica, muscovite or paragonite. At highest meta, grade of metamorphism, the uh, muscovite is unstable and it dissociates to potassium feldspars and silimonite. This is important because at higher grades, micas are unstable. Once you reach the granulate phases of metamorphism, micas are unstable. Muscovite generally dissociates to form potassium feldspars and silimonite. So, we cannot find any micas above granulate phases of metamorphism. Then, here uh, in uh, pyrox and uh, pyroxenes, uh, glocof uh, sorry, in uh, gloco gloconite is another important mineral in mica group, which is occurs in green science. The mica which occurs in green science is called as gloconite we have to remember that. Then, phlogophyte, which is again characteristic mineral of kimberlite in my 
by, by the mica which is occurring in kimberlites is phlogophyte which is up to 6 to 8 percent. What there, there is a frequently this is asked which mica is occurs in kimberlite it is phlogophyte which is up to 6 to 8 percent. Then by alteration uh, biotite weathers to montimolonite and vermiculite. Montimolonite and vermiculite are clay minerals. So, these micas on weathering form clay minerals. There is lot of uh, clay minerals which are available by the uh, alteration of micas. Then the last one is the silica. Silica is quartz SiO2 which occurs as quartz. Then there are some microcrystalline varieties like flint and chert again uh, forms and uh, which forms at low fluids. Then by silica has got uh, polymorphic forms like quartz, tridimide, cristobalite, schistovite uh, and coesite. Coesite is a high pressure uh, silica polymorph. Uh, we have to remember also the polymorphic forms of silica. And then this is about uh, in short about the mineralogy, then this is about the uh, crystallography, how to remember the uh, uh, normal classes and the uh, uh, how to what is triclinic. Triclinic is A is not equal to B is not equal to C, alpha not equal to beta is not equal to gamma. In cubic system, we have to remember A equal to B equal to C, alpha equal to beta equal to gamma equal to 90 degrees. So, we have to remember this normal classes of the crystal system. And then the we have to also remember the examples. In cubic system, there is rock salt, garnet, fluorite and uh, pyrite. In tetragonal, there is uh, zircon which is very important. Then in orthorhombic, we have uh, ortho, orthopyroxene, olivine and silimonite. In monoclinic, we have gypsum, feldspar, hornblende. In triclinic, we have uh, albite and kyanite. Hexagonal has got corundum, calcite, quartz and beryl. Examples are very important in this crystal system. Uh, we have to remember which mineral crystal is in. These are only a few examples. We, maybe we have to remember many examples of in each system. Then what is interfacial angle? This has been also uh, been referred to many times. Interfacial angle is an angle in crystals in the in between the normal two phases. With between the two phases, whatever is the angle, it is called the interfacial angle. It, interfacial angle is measured by instrument called goniometer. Interfacial angle is specific about some of the minerals. We can identify minerals based on the uh, interfacial angle. Then symmetry of elements. There are three uh, types of symmetry plane of symmetry, center of symmetry and axis of symmetry. So, we have to also remember what are the uh, uh, symmetry, the three, uh, then the next one is uh, the x-ray diffraction. X-ray diffraction is used to identify the minerals. Minerals can be identified megascopically by looking at the hand specimens, then microscopically by looking at the thin sections, then if not, we can also identify the mineral grains by making powder or by crystal, crystal x-ray or powder x-ray, it is called x-ray diffraction. The principle here is called as Bragg's law 2 d sin theta, n lambda equal to 2 d sin theta. Then I will just show you the figure, the lattice planes are there, the distance between the lattice planes is called as the d, d interspace between the lattice space, 2 d sin theta, lambda is the wavelength, theta is the angle of uh, 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 it, it is the angle it is um, which is just in uh, it is striking the crystal surface. Then angle of incidence and angle of reflection theta 2 d sin theta equal to n lambda. This is this principle is used in x-ray diffraction. Then now I hand over the next uh, few slides to Dr. Srinivas Sharma. Yeah, today we will uh, we, you have heard about the uh, minerals. So, now we will slowly move on to the <coughs> another subject called uh, petrology and uh, ore minerals, ore geology. So, in this uh, we will talk about the fundamentals of petrology, microscopy and uh, megascopy of some of the hard rocks. Uh, I will show you some rocks and minerals and also we will also talk about the ore minerals and their Indian occurrences. So, which is very important as part of the uh, competitive exams. Uh, I will I'll show you some of the definitions and some figures to remember these uh, geological structures. So, to start with, uh, we will uh, uh, talk about the interior of the earth, which is divided into three main categories that is uh, core, uh, mantle, and the crust. Crust is the upper portion 
upper uh, uh, 30 to 70 kilometers depending on the area where we are working on. So it will be both the continental crust as well as the oceanic crust and then mantle is divided into upper mantle and lower mantle. Then core also is divided into two divisions, uh, inner core and outer core. So we will see uh, how these rocks look like. Uh, the, the term petrology is derived from a Greek word uh, called rock and logica is study. So study of rocks is the petrology. So we will uh, see some details of the, this particular subject called petrology uh, which is very important to identify the rocks and the rocks are as you all know classified into three major uh, categories that is igneous uh, rocks that is the, they are the primary rocks and most of the granites that you see around they are all uh, the igneous rocks uh, and the sedimentary rocks are the secondary rocks that is the rocks which are formed from the you know disintegration or weathering transportation of the uh, primary rocks into and depositing them at one place and getting consolidated they are called sedimentary rocks. So I have given an example of sandstone here to a sedimentary rock. Then we also have the third category called metamorphic rocks. So these metamorphic rocks are formed by the you know compression uh, pressure or the temperature. So these are uh, metamorphosed. These are transformed into a different form or shape uh, th those minerals. Then it, it becomes a metamorphic rock. So I will show you uh, some examples uh, today to, to see uh, how these rocks occur and how they are uh, seen as the, uh, the hand specimen as well as the under microscope how these uh, rocks will look like. To, to, to start with the um, igneous rocks, they are derived from the Latin word called uh, ignis meaning fire. So that is the rocks are derived primarily from the, from the you know uh, uh, magma and uh, primary rocks are formed by cooling or solidification of magma due to their formation from the magma. They are also known as uh, magmatic rocks because they are derived from the magma. And uh, they are uh, the temperatures are of the order of 9 to 900 to 1600 degree centigrade temperature based on the composition and pressure. So magma is a naturally occurring hot molten rock material uh, within the earth. Magmas are viscous uh, in, in composition and uh, uh, materials that consist of solid minerals largely silicates are, and gas bubbles suspend, uh, suspended in a matrix of silica melt. So lava is the definition, uh, definition for lava is erupted magma under the earth's surface is called uh, lava. So when it is below the surface it is called magma and when it erupts to the surface it is called lava. Then uh, igneous rocks are classified into two major uh, types. The one is the intrusive rocks and the another one is the extrusive rock. Intrusive rocks are basically which are you know um, formed under the surface of the uh, earth's uh, surface of the earth. So if they are again divided into uh, two different types, so if they are very uh, de deeply buried, that is up to seven to eight kilometers below the earth's surface, they are called plutonic rocks. And if they are if the if they are erupted up to the uh, distance of two kilometers, then they are uh, called as uh, hyperbasal rocks. So examples here are given for uh, plutonic rocks is uh, one of the example is granite and for the hyperbasal rock it is gabbro. So and uh, the for the extrusive rocks you know the basalts which come uh, the lava erupts onto the surface and uh, uh, and gives rise to a uh, basically a, a major rock type called basalt so which is fine grained and uh, glassy in texture. Then uh, there are other extrusive rocks as well, uh, you know, uh, like basalts, andesites, and rhyolites are all types of. These are all uh, volcanic type, volcanic rocks, uh, distinguished on the basis of their mineral assemblages, basically, and also the chemical composition. So I have given here two examples. One is uh, uh, obsidian, which is like a glass. So uh, it, it there is, there are no crystals usually usually formed uh, in the in this particular one. And the pumice is, is another one which is a light colored and a lightweight material a rock uh, uh, which is uh, formed uh, in, in the extrusive igneous rocks. So and uh, these are some uh, vesicular uh, basalts which uh, I am trying to show you here. Uh, when the gas escapes from these, uh, when the uh, lava comes onto the surface and erupts onto the surface and uh, the gas uh, molecules in the in the lava escapes and becomes these kinds of vesicles are formed. 
So, these are called vesicular basalts and these are mostly acidic. So, uh, they are called andesites. And the pyroclastic rocks, uh, another example for the extrusive rock, these are hard broken, broken fragments results from the explosively uh, ripping apart from magma and uh, loose assemblages of pyroclasts are called tephra and depending on the size of the tephra, they can be classified as BAM, bombs, lapilli or ash. So, uh, these, these are called pyroclastic rocks. These are some of the examples uh, erupted uh, from the surface. So, then the coming to the intrusive rocks, more details on the intrusive rocks, we will see magma that cools at depth. So, I have already explained to you uh, the at depths of 2 to, uh, you know, 27, uh, 8 kilometers, uh, the intrusive rocks are formed. So, mostly the granites and gabbro and that kind of uh, rocks. And then uh, the environment to, uh, to deposit these intrusive rocks is uh, uh, incorporates in, uh, in, in the pieces of surrounding rocks. So, they, the, some of these rocks, they do not react, but uh, some of these material are still there in the, in the uh, exposed rocks. So, they are called xenoliths, that is the foreign rocks, that is foreign material in, the, in, this, particular, in this particular rock type. So, they, they may also move uh, by a process called stoping wherein uh, blocks are loosened by magma at top of the magma body with uh, these blocks, then sinking through the magma to accumulate on the floor of the magma body. Then these rocks, uh, the primary rocks are also classified uh, in terms of their chemical composition uh, of the magma uh, controlled by the abundance of different elements. Basically, these are called uh, major elements, silica, aluminum, iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium. These are a set of 10 elements which actually constitutes almost 99.9 percent .9 of the uh, of the rock that we are studying. So, mostly they are div uh, divided in uh, into mafic and felsic rocks. So, the examples are given as uh, for mafic rock a basalt which uh, basalt and gabbro which has got silica percentages of the order of 45 to 55 uh, silica percentage. So, they are basically classified on the basis of silica and they are formed at the temperatures of uh, around 1000 to 1200 degrees centigrade temperature and the prop other properties are the, they are less viscous and uh, less uh, gas contents so they are uh, low and the intermediate rocks which are having uh, you know kind of uh, 55 to 65% of silica they are classified as uh, intermediate rocks and they have uh, low uh, the rest of the percentages are uh, the elements like iron magnesium calcium and sodium so they they are they are deposited at the temperatures around uh, 800 to 1000 degrees centigrade uh, even in terms of viscosity and uh, the uh, gas they are uh, of the intermediate range so uh, not very high not very low uh, then comes to the uh, coming to the felsic rocks they are also called as acidic rocks which have got very high uh, amounts of uh, SiO2 the silica abundance is very high uh, the rest of the elements uh, constitute iron magnesium, calcium and uh, sodium and uh, the example for these uh, you know, felsic rocks are granite and rhyolite and they, they are deposited at slightly lower temperatures uh, uh, 650 to 800 degrees centigrade temperature and uh, they are highly viscous uh, material and they also have uh, gas content that we have seen in the earlier one the pyroclastic rocks which are mostly andesites. And then uh, I try to give some examples for these uh, uh, concordant forms and discordant forms. Uh, they are uh, they are basically con for the examples for the concordant forms are uh, sills, localiths, lopoliths. I will try to explain to you what is localith and lopolith as we go on. And um, intrusion in uh, uh, folded regions uh, they are called uh, with a different name: concordant batholiths and pacoliths. And discordant the examples for the discordant ones are. Uh, dikes basically, so dikes and sills are kind of same material but uh, uh, in a different uh, in, in different orientation. So then we will move on to some of these dikes and sills to define in terms of uh, the diagrammatic sketches. So the dikes are um, uh, tabular bodies which are uh, cutting across the uh, uh, earlier formed uh, uh, rock strata is called dike and if they are uh, the, the mafic material which is uh, along the uh, the surface of the uh, material that is along the systocity, then they are called sills and uh, these sills uh, dikes and sills are mostly mafic. So, you can see the next example the, the rock uh, uh, photograph which uh, is you know one dike which is intruded 
uh, deck material which is intruded into the uh, sedimentary layers that is called the uh, the uh, di uh, sill basically and then uh, locolith is a, a concordant body uh, with flat bottom the bottom of the um, uh, the the uh, the uh, this particular body is uh, is flat at the bottom and convex upwards you can see one of the mountain that you are able to see on the right side figure so which is a dome shaped structure that can be seen so the when the viscous magma is injected rapidly then it it forms um, into the into the along the bedding then uh, it cannot spread to much distance so then it forms like a uh, you know concave uh, dome shaped structure so low polyth is uh, opposite to this and these are uh, basin or saucer shaped uh, concordant bodies with uh, with the top nearly flat and convex bottom so the, the again there is an example uh, uh, given on the uh, right side photograph they are uh, uh, of the order of up to 150 miles uh, uh, in in terms of their diameter and then uh, coming to the that that forms the igneous uh, uh, part of the uh, rocks you know, how igneous rocks are formed and what are the different characteristics of the igneous rocks now when we move on to the sedimentary rocks sedimentary rocks are basically uh, formation uh, of the sediments by weathering so at the the primary rocks the pre existing rocks uh, weathers and then those uh, material the weathered material gets transported to uh, by glaciers or by water or wind and then they gets consolidated at one particular place then uh, deposits and then they also uh, become very very strong very uh, stable so th those uh, rocks are called secondary uh, secondary rocks and um, they they also undergo the process called diagenesis uh, physical and uh, chemical changes so they becomes compact and uh, the there will be a cementing material uh, in these sedimentary rocks i will show you some examples as we go on so these are some of the uh, examples uh, in the first uh, left side photograph you can see some of the rock fragments and then when they uh, become close together then they become compact and these compact material Uh, with the cementing material they become very compact and uh, and strong rock so they form the sedimentary rocks so if you see the right side uh, right side figure where you can see some of the sedimentary rocks with uh, uh, which are you know mostly the conglomerate that is shown and some of the uh, sedimentary structures i i'll show you as we go on so these uh, you know, the sedimentary rocks are also classified into uh, different uh, rock types they are basically Uh, clastic sedimentary rocks chemical sedimentary rocks and organic sedimentary rocks these clastic sedimentary rocks are uh, uh, formed by the mechanical breakdown of the pre existing rock and then becoming uh, 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 and then becoming compact and and material uh, they they are uh, the uh, the example given is the conglomerate here for the chemical sedimentary rocks uh, they are formed by the chemical precipitation uh, evaporation or crystallization from the aqueous solutions uh, the example here given is the is a limestone which is uh, a chemical sedimentary rock so the they are formed based on the chemical precipitation then they are uh, there are organic sedimentary rocks and the organic sedimentary rocks are formed exclusively by remains of plants and animals uh, the example here uh, is given uh, as as coal so coal which is a you know kind of Um, a material that is used in semi of our, uh, several of our uh, as a fuel uh, for several of our our furnaces uh, comes from the organic material so these are sedimentary rocks and then again uh, the uh, sedimentary rocks are classified based on the pebble size or the uh, the rock size fragment size within the uh, within the sedimentary rock they are of the order of you know uh, of the millimeter size the the to start with from the bottom they are clay silt uh, pebbles uh, sand and pebble and then boulders so they can be of the order of very thick boulders as well so you can see the sizes uh, they are of the order of you know few millimeters to uh, less than 1 millimeter so they are clay or mostly fine grained rocks conglomerates and breccias which you see uh, of the order of the boulders then uh, we will also they are also classified uh, the classification of sedimentary rocks uh, clastic sedimentary rocks basically into again three different types uh, rudaceous rocks arenaceous rocks and argillaceous rocks 
So the examples for the uh, rudaceous rocks are conglomerate and uh, brixia that is formed uh, with the uh, bigger grain size and uh, arenaceous rocks are medium grain. So the example here given is a quad uh, sandstone, but uh, quad sandstone and grit all also uh, examples for the arenaceous rocks. And we have the you know, fine grained rocks, uh, which are uh, grain size of the order of less than one millimeter uh, diameter. Then uh, the examples here given are the shale and uh, mud, rag, mud rock. So these are uh, sedimentary rocks. And then we, we talk about the uh, metamorphic rocks. This metamorphic, metamorphic itself means the change of form. So meta itself, meta means change and morphic means form. So it, they change their form. Uh, based on their, you know, uh, the pressure temperature conditions that they undergo. So there could be a mineralogical change or the textural change. So if the change is uh, mineralogical, then uh, the mineralog mineralogical assemblage uh, uh, with, um, uh, reacts and forms into a different mineral. So then they are, it is called uh, mineralogical change. Then textural change is they are changing their size, shape and orientation of these minerals uh, in response to the direction of the pressure that is exerted or the stress that is exerted onto that particular rock type. So any rock formed under a set of PT conditions uh, when subjected to change in their uh, ambient pressure temperature, temperature conditions, they form, they transform into uh, these metamorphic rocks. Um, we'll see some examples. Uh, all these changes takes place in solid state. There is no you know, liquidus material that is getting into these metamorphic rocks. So these metamorphic rocks, uh, the process by which the mineralogical, textural or chemical characteristics of a rock changes due to changes in uh, uh, its physicochemical environment in solid state is known as metamorphism. Ideally speaking, the metamorphism is isochemical. So there is no chemistry changing in, in the, uh, the process of uh, metamorphism. Uh, they are getting readjusted into a different mineral. So that is called uh, the uh, metamorphism and uh, when the when there is a large scale additions or subtractions of ions by hot fluids uh, uh, that is called the hydrothermal fluids then uh, this change uh, in bulk chemical composition of the rock if, if that is happening then it is called uh, metasomatism and uh, we'll also see uh, what are the agents that uh, affects the uh, these rocks to undergo this metamorphism they are the uh, agents of metamorphism these are physicochemical aspects which causes the changes in mineralogical or textural changes during metamorphism. Basically are heat, uh, heat or temperature and then there is a pressure uh, which is changing uh, the uh, rocks into different uh, rock types. Then there are fluids, time also and then the bulk composition of the protolith. The original parent rock that has undergone metamorphism all ca is called the protolith. So these are some of the you know definitions which are asked in the competitive exams that you should remember. And uh, heat, temperature, uh, uh, how it affects uh, uh, the these metamorphic rocks. So that is the geothermal gradient. If the geothermal gradient is stable, uh, continents is around uh, 50 degrees centigrade per kilometer. And tectonically active stress, uh, it can be three times of the above. And uh, these activities, you can see the right side diagram where I have shown try to show you the different phases of metamorphism in terms of the left side, uh, uh, the axis indicates the pressure, the right side one indicates the temperature and uh, there are different grades of metamorphism that is occurring. So the example that I have shown you earlier, uh, a photograph where the sill is intruding into the, uh, the into a sedimentary rock uh, of the order of 700 degrees centigrade temperature is causing some uh, textural or chemical changes in the in the pre-existing sedimentary rock which is getting metamorphosed. So those metamorphic uh, textures can also be observed in the uh, in the metamorphic rock. So these are some of the index minerals uh, or rocks that can be you know based on the grade of metamorphism uh, we can see. So they are uh, the high grade uh, metamorphic rocks uh, of the order of uh, magmatites. And then an also uh, is a, is also a, a transposition of granite into uh, when it gets metamorphosed, it becomes nicest. Then intermediate uh, grade metamorphism, the example is cyst and blue cyst phases metamorphism it is called and then phyllites and shales are kind of low grade metamorphic rocks. And this is again uh, trying to show you the increase of the metamorphic grade from shale to 
uh, nices in between uh, slate and phyllite and cyst. And uh, finally, this is the rock cycle uh, that, that generally happens in the nature. So, the igneous rocks to start with, uh, you know, from the uh, left side, uh, extrusive rocks, then they, they becomes, uh, gets uplifted and becomes outcrops and then they, uh, they gets weathered, uh, the process called erosion and transportation and deposition of these rocks and then becomes the uh, sediments. And then uh, these sedimentary rocks, when they get buried and uh, compaction and cementation happens and then finally the sedimentary rocks uh, undergo some physical chemical conditions, uh, uh, change in the physical chemical conditions and then they become metamorphic rocks. And these metamorphic rocks again, uh, you know, when they get subducted, uh, then when they are getting melted, then uh, it, it again becomes uh, magma at the bottom of the uh, earth surface and then cools and then become, it, it, it uh, erupts into in the form of uh, intrusive rocks. This is a kind of rock cycle. So, I will show you some examples of uh, some of the igneous rocks, uh, both as uh, hand specimen as well as uh, as well as the uh, photomicrograph, which you can very easily remember the granite that we see all around uh, our Telangana state. Uh, it looks like as a as a specimen, hand specimen like this, and they, it consists of uh, K feldspar quartz and uh, K feldspar as as the major minerals. And then gabbro looks like this, um, uh, which is uh, you know kind of. Um, uh, rock, igneous rock, uh, which has got uh, the minerals called pyroxene, uh, the and plagioclase. Uh, the sir, uh, the earlier speaker has explained to you uh, what are the composition of different minerals, and basalt, which is a fine-grained rocks, which has got uh, these these lots of minerals uh, in the basalt. And then some of the sedimentary rocks again under the microscope. Uh, most of the sedimentary rocks uh, here. Uh, the example is a sandstone which contains uh, minerals like uh, quartz, uh, which is a kind of uh, most of the, um, uh, the sandstones of the order of uh, uh, having the chemical composition of the order of, of the chemical composition of the order of, uh, you know, very, very high, high percentage of silica uh, having uh, feldspar at, at places. And then uh, a conglomerate, which is uh, the, the size of the size of these fragments is very high. So, they, they are mostly containing quartz and some cementing material, uh, which could be again of the, of the silica and different uh, other materials. And then uh, the limestones, the fossils are very important uh, uh, material, which are, you know, when the, when the sediments get compacted, then some of the animal or uh, uh, plant material remains and they, they remain as, as fossils. So, these fossils are very useful to identify when this particular species was alive or when this particular species was prominent. So, the, the, this is an example to show the fossiliferous limestone and then uh, coming to the some of the metamorphic rocks, we will see how they look like. This is a phyllite uh, in the hand specimen, this is how it looks like and the minerals are oriented here, you can see the minerals are oriented in one particular direction. That means uh, that that tells us that there was a, some compressive pressure that uh, you know uh, made these uh, minerals into into this particular uh, one one alignment of in one uh, minerals in one particular direction. So cyst, this is a carnitiferous cyst. Sir explained to you earlier about the garnet. So now this is a garnet uh, cyst that is uh, seen, uh, which is a metamorphic rock. And serpentinization, sir talked about the serpentinization in the uh, in the earlier earlier talk. So you can see the serpent serpentine how it looks like uh, serpentinized rock how it looks like under a microscope. And gneiss, which is a transposition of a granite into uh, when high high pressure is applied. So the orientation of uh, the minerals in one particular direction you can you can see. And the marble, which is very very you know uh, proficiently very very. Uh, used very much used in the flooring uh, in different uh, buildings uh, is a metamorphic rock. This is how it looks like under the microscope. Uh, the ores are very important uh, part. Uh, I will explain to you what are the ores, but we will see some of the ore minerals. Uh, this is the gold and uh, pyrite, uh, galena, uh, which is uh, seen under the microscope. The gold looks like, uh, like this in the microscope and galena, which is a ore for lead. Uh, is, is like this and then banded iron formation which is ore for the iron 
so uh, which has got uh, the two bands of jasper hematite and uh, uh, jasper so uh, which we can see uh, hematite is a ore of iron and uh, this is a copper ore covellite so uh, we'll we'll now talk about some uh, to some extent of the ore minerals uh, what are the ores and how how they are formed so ore is a type of rock that contains sufficient minerals uh, with important elements uh, that is the anomalous concentration of that particular element uh, will make uh, that that rock into a, a ore and uh, ores are extracted from the earth through mining uh, we all know and uh, most of the metal metals are uh, uh, extracted by a process called uh, refinement and smelting and metal ores are generally uh, in three different uh, forms either oxide form or sulfide form or the silicates and some metals uh, which we know copper and gold they occur as native metals as well and commonly concentrated in the earth's crust and uh, noble metals not usually forming compounds uh, such as gold they occur as the uh, noble metals and uh, they are in native form ores must be uh, processed to extract the metals uh, of interest from the waste rock and uh, uh, from these ore minerals ore bodies are formed by a variety of geological process these processes are uh, called uh, ore genesis the understanding the of these ores uh, is is called ore genesis uh, ore genetic studies and formation of uh, mineral deposits is a complex phenomenon it is not a very simple process and uh, in the geological sciences uh, it has got very uh, large importance to understand the mineral deposits uh, mineralogy and texture structures are studied and ore and gang material gang is the uh, material uh, waste material which is associated with these ores uh, that will be eliminated that will be that has to be removed finally to to extract the some uh, metal from this particular uh, material so the knowledge of understanding these mineral deposits is uh, so fundamental in dealing with the further uh, categorization of uh, to decide the mode of exploration and exploitation of these particular materials in uh, utilized to identify newer deposits in similar geological setup so uh, just before getting into what are the ores and where they occur so the crustal abundances of different the major part of the uh, materials chemical compounds that can be seen most common elements in the earth's crust are uh, most of these uh, elements like iron magnesium uh, sodium uh, uh, and calcium aluminum and they are all in the in the form of uh, their oxide so oxide so oxygen is the most abundant uh, along associated with the uh, you know like sio2 al2o3 uh, combination of these oxides with these metals and there are different processes <coughs> uh, in the uh, formation of these uh, mineral deposits uh, they are called primary process primary process again are magmatic processes and are the some hot fluids which are coming and depo getting deposited into these uh, uh, pre existing rocks are called the hydrothermal process or metamorphic process uh, where there will be you know some metamorphic fluid which is uh, concentrating some of these orogenic uh, orogenic material and uh, secondary process uh, which are exogenic and uh, sedimentary or superficial processes are also responsible in some ore deposits we will see those deposits uh, as we go on so uh, just to start with uh, the mineral uh, province map of india uh, where uh, the some of the minerals uh, are shown here uh, like copper lead uh, zinc and uh, some other uh, uh, material like iron mag manganese which are being used uh, on daily basis uh, in all our ag daily activities so these are some of the uh, mineral abundance uh, map and uh, certain mineral concentrations are seldom uh, limited to a particular geological age so geological age is uh, is a uh, era so they are divided into archean protozoic like that so into into different other categories uh, that we are not dealing with today but uh, some of these uh, metal deposits associated in that particular uh, uh, geological era we will see uh, in 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 uh, next few slides so large scale localization of these particular ore deposits of that particular age uh, are being shown here so for example if we see uh, archean is one era which is the very early form of the very early stage of the earth's evolution so of the order of 2800 million years and above up to 2500 million years is called uh, archean 
uh, the some of the metal deposits uh, associated with these archean specific to archean i would say are some of the chromite deposits of sukinda in orissa and chromite deposits of baula again in in uh, orissa and sitampundi complex in tamil nadu kondapalle chromite of uh, krishna district of andhra pradesh are specific to this archean archean era and then uh, diamonds as we all know they are all uh, very recent uh, the the kimberlite is the one of the rock type that actually hosts the hosts the uh, these diamonds uh, you can see they are they are called they are uplifted onto the surface in the form of pipes so they are called kimberlite pipes you can see in this particular figure uh, three four different uh, you know one triangle one rectangle like that so they are they are showing the uh, the kimberlite occurrences some of them are demandiferous and some of them are not but there are uh, these these rocks are the kimberlite kimberlite clan of rocks are the important source for the diamonds so they are mostly the naranpet kimberlite uh, 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 province and uh, vajrakarur kimberlite province like that they are in the periphery of the you know protrusive kadappa basin uh, on the western side of the kadappa basin that you can see uh, with the with this in this particular figure and then uh, the most important other deposits are iron ore deposits and they account to be 85% of the total world occurrences iron ores uh, occur in the uh, protozoic and they are associated with the banded iron formations uh, in in greenstone belts uh, basically so the karnataka greenstone belt for example the sandur iron ore shimoga iron ore kudremukh iron ore and uh, they are all uh, in the in the karnataka and uh, goa belt also hosts a lot of iron ores uh, north goa iron ore deposits and the names are given here so some of the iron ore series uh, these deposits are in singom in orissa uh, as well so and then in during the lower protozoic time uh, we had uh, the abundance of these uranium deposits the uranium uh, you, we all know is used uh, as a nuclear uh, fuel material for all our daily needs which produces lot of electricity in the uh, for for all of us and uh, which is used um, uh, in the in the nuclear reactors so the the uranium deposits are basically uh, two different types unconfirmed type of deposits uh, uh, of uranium in india basically they are at uh, lambapur in nalgonda district of telangana and uh, chatisgarh uh, deposits and there is second type of deposit called vein type of uh, uh, uranium deposit uh, from uh, jaduguda uh, and some deposits in arunachal pradesh as well and some in kadappa basin uh, pulivendula deposits and then uh, upper protrusoic uh, uh, of the uh, uh, the basically we have large deposits of limestone which is used in the <coughs> cement industry uh the uh, type name that is given as uh, nargi limestone which has got uh, very high um, cseo3 uh, and and they are very rich in uh, uh, you know uh, limestones in the in the andhra pradesh and telangana the uh, the kadappa the periphery of kadappa basin mostly asso associated with these uh, limestones so that we can see and uh, anandpur karnool and nalgond they are spread over all these districts uh, the the you know common combined districts of nalgonda adilabad and khammam rangareddy and then uh, the the permian triassic uh, is endowed with the uh, gondwana formations which is bestowed uh, with uh, more than 2 uh, billion tons of uh, gray, uh, very high grade <coughs> coal uh, occurring in uh, different epochs spread in parts of andhra pradesh and maharashtra Uh, orissa jharkhand bihar and west bengal so the this is uh, you know important uh, where are the uh, coal deposits occurring in in which state so these are some examples given here and uh, uh, tertiary formations uh, the lignite which is which is also very useful uh, is uh, naivali lignite uh, in in tamil nadu and uh, uh, we also are endowed with the Uh, pleistocene eocene formations with a lot of oil uh, which is again occurring in uh, uh, states of um, assam gujarat uh, and krishna godavari basin in andhra pradesh and kaveri basin so these are the occurrences for the uh, for the oil and uh, there are some uh, very recent uh, uh, formations of uh, in terms of geology uh, they are also very important nowadays uh, several of the organizations are looking for 
you know the red earth uh, kind of material uh, which are called as beach sands uh, the our country is endowed with uh, a, a big sea coast both sides of the country uh, which has uh, which is called our uh, which is explored for beach sands and beach sands uh, generally contain uh, these minerals called ilmenite magnetite monazite uh, zircon and rutile and they are they are, they are abundant with the uh, rare earth uh, rare earth element uh, uh, material so most of the uh, exploration activities are on in uh, in andhra pradesh kerala tamil nadu and uh, most of the west coast as well and then uh, the next type of uh, ore deposit which is also very important uh, uh, you know in the context of uh, the ore deposits uh, they are called placer uh, deposits or placer concentrations so the most of the uh, diamonds as we all are aware some of the uh, you know uh, regions in uh, andhra pradesh they have these placer concentrations of the diamonds several of our people they search for diamonds uh, small small diamonds in the uh, they are they are placer deposits uh, there are gold concentration uh, of placer type uh, in in wynad uh, and uh, other places and tin concentrations in uh, bastar in madhya pradesh silvanite uh, concentration in bihar uh, garnet and corundum are also available and uh, foundry kind of uh, sand deposits are occurring in the uh, gudur and surrounding areas and these are some of the uh, ores i try to show you uh, here uh, some of the uh, megascopic uh, rock species and thank you very much yeah but to continue with some one more topics uh, i'll just talk about the geomorphology which is very important uh, geomorphology plays a very important role in the subject geology we have to understand uh, like uh, what are the there are many geology uh, geo, ge geological agents mainly glaciers rivers and then we have uh, limestone sinkholes so we have to understand what are the landforms associated with each of these uh, geomorphological features suppose we are taking about talking about glacial uh, landforms in glacial we have to talk about erosional landforms and depositional landforms in glacial erosional landforms uh, we have very imp uh, they are very important in playing in the uh, formation of landscape they occur in high and mil middle altitudes they don't occur in the low altitudes because you know glacier there's a line of snow line above this snow line only glaciers occur the uh, features associated with the erosional landforms are uh, mainly uh, siric horns arids and uh, serrated ridges and glacial valleys and troughs the glacial valleys are v shaped so we have to uh, uh, know what are the v shaped and u shaped valleys the valleys which are v shaped are associated with the glaciers then glacial depositional features those the earlier ones are the erosional features and the next ones are the depositional features so we should not get confused between the erosional features and the depositional features the siri khans uh, valleys are all erosional features then the depositional features are iskers outwash plains drumlins and moraines they have very important in, um, in molding the landscapes in middle and high altitudes and then we have erosional landforms of wind wind plays an important role in uh, in landscaping in changing the geomorphology of the area then the erosional landforms due to wind are mainly pedi plains pedestrian rocks which are called mushroom which have very uh, 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 base is very small and the top is uh, big these are called pedestrian rocks or mushroom rocks then we have deflation hollows and playas so these four are erosional landforms of wind we usually get confused between the erosional landforms depositional landforms so we should be very careful in understanding the erosional landforms and the depositional landforms so the depositional landforms of wind are mainly sand dunes sand dunes are of many types barchens parabolic dunes sieve dunes longitude dune dunes transverse dunes all the dunes are depositional landforms of the wind erosional landforms i already have shown you so if for each one the glaciers the erosional landforms are different the depositional landforms are different for wind the erosional landforms are different the depositional landforms are different then if you go to river there are then in river we have erosional landforms then we have trans uh, depositional trans during transportation a river is a very important uh, uh, agent of 
uh, landform uh, which which is uh, very important in landscaping so we in river we have like the, uh, they are first there is a transportation that is corrosion corrosion and hydraulic action so transportation may be of different types it may be after erosion the eroded material transported the erosion occurs in as corrosion corrosion there is a there is a abrasion between the material when the river uh, is taking over the course of the these sediments they are rubbed together that is called as corrosion then they are transported after erosion the eroded materials get transported with running water then how it is transported is there are four types of transportation that is traction salutation suspension and solution so we have to remember these are the four types of important transportation methods on river sediments then the, the erosion features of due to running water that is the river uh, rivers are valleys and gorges and canyons these are the uh, erosion features of the river the seeps uh, are the erosion land features of the glaciers the valleys of the rivers are u shaped valleys of the river uh, the rivers uh, the rivers are the then we have potholes plunge pools incised and entrenches meanders river terraces these are the Uh, erosional feet landforms of the running water depositional landforms of the river are alluvial fans deltas flood plains natural levees meanders and oxbow lakes so we have to just uh, be very careful in remembering the erosional land features and depositional land features thank you we have covered two subjects uh, some of the subjects and uh, the next session we'll try to uh, cover more subjects thank you very much